Welcome to Southland Marahiku in New Zealand's Deep South, a region renowned for its unmatched beauty. This week it provides a natural playground for New Zealand's best road cyclists in the 67th edition of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Over seven days we will see all the South has to offer, starting and finishing in Invercargill, a city transforming for the future. Through fertile farmland, the rugged south coast, the beauty of Fiordland and the majestic remarkables in Queenstown. All to push the country's top road cyclists to their absolute limit. 114 riders, 19 teams, over 860 kilometres and just one winner. This is the 2023 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. The Queen stage of the 2023 tour from Mossburn to the Remarkables in Queenstown saw a quartet of riders make their move soon after the stage start. The foursome became three around the Devil's Staircase and as the leaders hit the final climb, it quickly became a two-man battle. Former Southlander Elliot Crowther and Australian Kane Richards matched each other pedal stroke for pedal stroke before Crowther made his move. The Seattle-based rider rode off to claim an emphatic stage win, with Richards rolling across the line in second, enough to give him an 18-second lead heading into Thursday's iconic stage to the top of Bluff Hill. Actually, it couldn't have worked out better, to be honest. Like, not quite getting that jersey and seeing a good mate, Elliot Crowther, take a win. So, um, all in all, I think as a team, we're pretty chuffed. The hill was pretty good. It, uh, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest, so I just kind of stuck with the fastest wheel I could see and, yeah, kind of blurred a bit, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, conditions have been um, caused by a stalemate. I think as well the, the calibre of riders, everyone's very even over the top. Um, it actually makes a better race, I'd say, not having a standout favourite. Um, it's going to come down to more than strength. I think it will come down to tactics and how people ride as a team. And yeah, so it's more of a game of chess and I think that suits us. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's been a busy few weeks. So um, about four weeks ago, I headed off to Manchester for the World Masters Track Champs. Uh, I was racing in sort of four races over there. It went pretty well, and then from there, um, shot up to the US to our office in Boulder, Colorado. Spent a couple of weeks at altitude training, at home for a day, and then down to Southland. So it's been a, a hectic few weeks. It's uh, good to be here. Good to support. I've got a lot of friends, and obviously my brother's racing as well. So yeah, it's cool to be here. I mean, he's kept it under wraps for the last few days. So it's just about getting through uh, through the tour in those first stages with the gravel. And then obviously it was a big day yesterday with Remarkables and another big day today. I think fatigue really starts to set in today and we found out last year that the stage to Gore was much harder than everyone expected. I think all you can do is take it one day at a time and just give it absolutely everything today and pray for your recovery, gods. <laughs> Today could be a bit of fun. Lots of people in GC, not too far off it. Uh, can, being, uh, the weather down here has been pretty calm so far, so uh, not too much work has to be done, but too many. So at some point it's going to light up. Today or tomorrow, we'll uh, wait and see. Not too much wind today, so maybe it'll stay more controlled in the beginning, but yeah, it'll be fireworks up that climb. I uh, drove over on Friday and it's, that road just doesn't end. It's just. <laughs> I'm bloody excited for it. I've heard how dangerous it is, but I never know how to actually ride it, so yeah, real excited. And this morning we have a man that knows this tour extremely well. 50 year association, Bruce Ross. 35 years of that as tour director. As a life member of Cycling South, and he has the pleasure of cutting the ribbon as they set sail here for 154 kilometres, Doug. Invercargill to Bluff, but they head out towards Wyndham Edendale where we know there's a lot of undulations and traditionally a very quick start before they finish up the very grunty hill into Bluff. It's a totally different climb to the one they experienced yesterday. Yeah, a totally different climb, a totally different course, a different set of strategies and a, com a completely new day. Today could be the day, but we say that every day and each day is just as important as the other in the SBS Bank Tour. 
Fantastic support once again from the local Southland Girls High School out in fine voice here for the riders as they come past. And the, the riders say it year on year how excited they are to have that support. And you see local man Marshall Wherewood, he's particularly excited by the fact he's getting plenty of support on the sides of the roads as a lot of the local riders are experiencing their first ever tour. Morale is everything, and this boy here, Marshall Lewood, in his first ever SBS Bank tour, has got it in spades. Nick Kurgazoo, the seasoned pro, he's all business, and his morale must be high too. You have to have that. You have to have a lot of focus and a lot of enthusiasm, because Nick Kurgazoo just goes hunting for that Harcourt Sprint Ace jersey every single stage. All focus and with a plan to try and pick up some of these early points as we've seen with him day in and day out. And he knows full well the experience in this tour that this stage often sees a break go very early on, often with a bit of a tail to side win for these riders, but today it's starting to pick up a little bit. It's a bit murky out there today in comparison to the last few days. That may influence the way the race is run. Absolutely correct, Julian. The, the conditions on this stage are really going to dictate what happens in the group. We see the usual traditional stage starts, which are so fast and so hard. Riders trying to go off the front. Riders trying to get sprint preams like we just saw Nick Kugazoo and one of the creation signs riders here coming out of Tisbury trying to split things up. The wind is going to be affected today, but in the backs of their minds, all these riders are still thinking about that hill and bluff. So we have three riders now trying to sneak themselves off the front. Interesting to see here, it's the tour leader, the man that was off the front all day long. He's got the white vest on here today for his uh, team, and he's now trying to sneak his way off here. And a few riders, I don't think, realise, Doug, that he is the man that's gone off in this trio. That's a really bold move there from Kane Richards from the Koopmans Booth Logistics team. He has snuck off the front here. They obviously haven't seen perhaps with the vest on that it may, is, may be who it is, but that is a bold move from Kane Richards. He is really showing some intent here, and it could be that that's their strategy right from, you know, early on, of course, and right through this stage. Let's try and get away, get a buffer on the climb, and see if we can minimise any losses, if we have to, up that last hill. He's sucked back into the fold though are the trio here as the next lot of riders start to put a bit of pressure on towards the front here over these little undulations just on the outskirts of Invercargill. Fatigue must be starting to set in for one or two of these riders here. Oh, we see a crash go down. As we mentioned, the word fatigue, that could be a factor in it. Over a third of the field going down, and I think I can pick out the man in pink, the under-23 leader. This is, oh my goodness, Duck, this is incredible. The amount of riders being affected here could make a big impact to the way this stage runs. Oh, just a disaster. This is the last thing you want as a bike racer, and there's some lads there that really have come unstuck. There's still a few sitting there on the deck. Everyone looks to be getting up and on again and of course there's some mechanical work going on here but that is just such an unfortunate way to start the stage. You can see the effects of what it's done here as they are splintering all over the road as the front half of the group just continue on. They've stayed clear but they would have heard the crushing sound of the disc brakes etc going on there as riders went down heavily. We hope that they're all okay and will be able to get themselves back into formation but this is going to take a while for one or two of these riders. There it is. That is the under 23 leader. He's fallen heavily after a fantastic ride yesterday. This is bike racing unfortunately. We hope he's going to be okay. Yeah, that is just the worst kind of luck and we just hope that that young lad is going to be okay and hopefully can get back on his bike and carry on. This is of course the remnants here of what we've got left. They're all trying to get back onto the back of the race but that was a real tough way to start this stage. So the riders now, as you can see from the graphics, making their way on the outskirts of Wyndham. This is where it gets very lumpy and bumpy for these uh, riders here, Doug. The wind has picked up a little bit, but still not a significant factor as the bunch has tried to get itself back into some sort of formation, some sort of remnants of normality. Yeah, this is a very, very lumpy stage, uh, or part of the stage through the Wyndham Glenham Hills. Very exposed, very rough roads. Uh, a lot of the local bike racers are, are training and racing around here a lot. But this is another one of those scenarios where you can get a group, get out of sight. Next thing you know, you're out of mind. And this is exactly what this front trio are trying to do. This offers a lot of opportunities, this undulating terrain around here. And it looks like the figure here of Ben Oliver, the man from the Creation Signs Mighty Q team. He'll be a bit disappointed with the way the climb unfolded yesterday for him here. And he's now driving a bit of a break. And it looked like, Doug, 
Ollie Jones and Sam Jenner that have joined him. So these riders really are trying hard to establish this move. And in the back of this group, coming right up with a head of steam on is Max Gamble from the Sea Brown Builders Olford contracting squad. He is chasing the king of the mountains points. And his strategy here will be to try and get away in this group and try to take the maximum amount of king of mountains points that are up for grabs in this stage. And there certainly are a few points up for grabs for him here because he's tied with Elliot Crowther from yesterday on 24 points apiece. So this is a good move here for him to try and secure that King of the Mountains here today. Max Campbell here at the front from the Sea Brown Builders of contracting team. He is there for one reason only, and that's to take the King of the Mountains points. You can see here there's obviously been a bit of a, a gentleman's arrangement. These other three boys, of course, are there for the overall classification. Their goals are a lot loftier than just that one jersey. So Max Campbell here has really done well. He started climbing well up that Glenua Hill on day one, and he is really showing that he is one of the best climbers in this year's SBS Bank Tour. So these three will be very pleased to have the man that's out there trying to pick up the King of the Mountains points as they try and stay clear of this chasing peloton, which has no surprise the Copeland's team on the front. At a minute 25, that will see Ben Oliver in that break at the moment being the virtual leader. And that's why you see these guys in white trying to control factors. Absolutely correct, Julian. This is one of the responsibilities you've got when you have the tour leader's jersey of the SBS Bank Tour on. If you're not in the break and you haven't got a rider in the break, it's up to your team and up to you to make the chase. So the other squads will be actually having a bit of a, a, a chat and a bit of a think and saying, hey, this is quite good here. We can have a bit of a break while this is carrying on as well. So it'll be interesting just to see what the tactic is of Kane Richards. He'll obviously be dictating things as to how far and how long they're going to go. We still have 60 k's to go and remembering, as I've said constantly, there is Bluff Hill yet to finish on. So our three leaders on the road continue on their way down towards a bluff here. They'll be well aware that the peloton have left them hanging out there at around a minute odd most of the day. But with only 10 kilometres to go, we might potentially see what we have seen so many times. The peloton start to bear down on them. It's like the engines all of a sudden switch on. They get a bit of a taste for it. They look down to bluff, see the hill. But today, Doug, they'll be struggling to see the hill, of course, which in some cases might be good for one or two with the murky, foggy conditions. Psychologically, that bluff hill off in the distance, as you've said, Julian, can be really damaging when you know your legs are sore and you're watching, uh, you know, that hill climb off into the distance. The conditions today are really favourable. They're not too hot. Here's the front of the group again. There's not a lot of wind. You can see the group all together. There's not a lot of uh, fanning out into the insides of the roads. The time gap at 56 seconds will be quite comfortable. There are a lot of riders in here who've got aspirations of climbing this hill quickly who will be licking their lips at a 56 second gap. Interesting to note there in third and fourth place is a couple of riders from the PRV Pista Corsa team. Now, of course, they have got Dan Gardner, the winner of last year up the Bluff Hill. We know he can climb well. He got third yesterday. He would be a serious contender. The three leaders are just starting up the first very steep pinch up Lee Street. This energy expenditure that they've used in order to try and get away in this breakaway will be now compounding on them. And you can see here the peloton is starting to react. There's counter attack after a counter attack coming from the front of this group. It looks like the figure there of one of the riders of C. Brown Builders, Alford Contracting, Jarman, I think, one of the French riders, of two French riders in this year's tour, who's making his way across, and he's doing it very quick indeed, as the fatigue factor really starts to set in for these boys that have been off the front for a long time. So the Frenchman makes the connection with the three. Is he going to go straight past? No, he's decided to catch his breath for a moment on one of the few descents as part of this big climb today. The, the only descent of this big climb today really Julian and this next bit past the RSA Memorial is super steep almost as steep as the top part but you can see here the, the front group haven't capitulated Ben Oliver there from Creation Signs might acute he is still trying to drive this he still thinks he can stay away from this group this is his bid for the for glory up this stage and into the potential leaders jersey but this stage has just 
completely come together at the bottom of Bluff Hill and these guys really, really have got a lot of work ahead of them yet. The grind goes on now for these riders and you can see the different abilities, the fatigue factor, the styles of riders there as they start to tire getting up this hill here. But the man on the front is pounding on the pedals and is opening up a significant gap here on the field. But it's only a few K this climb, but man, does it go on and on for these riders. That is a really impressive start by Leo Paul Jarman from the C Brown Builders Alfred contracting squad there. They've obviously uh, you know, done a reconnaissance of this climb before the start of this race. They know exactly what gear they're going to be in, where they are on the climb, how far to go, at what work rate. But that was an explosive start. I haven't seen anything like that for quite a few years. Intriguing to see a number of riders sitting back at this point in time as much as you can on such a steep climb. So the Frenchman continues to hold on in a good pedalling style here. He's not rolling too much on the bike here at this point in time. He'll be looking up, Doug, that long straight. You've been there, done that before. That crowd up the top corner. You're waiting to get there, but it just seems to go on and on. It really is one of these climbs where you have to be very careful about your pace judgment and about how much energy you expend on these lower pinches because they are super steep. And a lot of these riders underestimate how vicious this climb gets further up this straight as we go. You can see here all of these riders are now having a bit of a go at jumping across and trying to hit the lead of the race. You can see the 1k to go board here and you think, gosh, 1k, it's not that far. But this climb is one of the hardest climbs in stage racing, if not in the world. It is so steep at the top. That was Matt Suda from the uh, Japanese team here. Daikin uh, and Ray White combined uh, sponsorship supporting those guys to come all the way here for the tour. And Matt Suda has jumped straight across and has now placed himself into second position. He's the man there in the red colours. But meanwhile though, it is the man from Europe who's off the front here and still holding a decent sort of a gap. As you said, Dave, you can see the surges go. Then all of a sudden, the body shuts down on one or two of these riders. Timing is all important on any climb, but particularly when it comes to Bluff Hill. It really is, and you can see the number 86, that's the local lad, Hayden Strong, in that Japanese team. He has come to the front. We haven't seen much of Hayden in this year's SBS Bank Tour. He knows this climb like the back of his hand. He trained, he raced as a young guy. He knows exactly where to go and what to do, and he will have told his Japanese teammates exactly that. This young lad from France, though, he is starting to capitulate. Leo Paul Jarman might have gone just a wee bit quick at the start of the stage, and he is now going straight back to the peloton. However, it's been ex excellent to see so many international riders taking on the tour. They haven't come here for a holiday. They are very keen to mix it up off the front day in and day out. And we've seen every one of them have a go. And it's Matt Suda still with a decent sort of a gap. You don't need too much here, but it's whether or not the body will allow you to continue to pound along here. The heart rate will be going through the roof. As we look further back, there is still a large group, quite surprisingly, about two thirds the way up the climb. This year's edition has been so close and that is represented here on this climb. There is any number of about 20 riders here still in contention with about 500 metres to go yet on the famous Bluff Hill climb. So it is anyone's race you can see towards the front here. You've got Boris Clark from the QFS team and a number of the other contenders that are vying for the win in this. It is important up Bluff that you don't lose too much time but it's important if you can, if you're taking time, to make as much of a gain as you can on this last part of the climb. Speaking of time, there is no sight of the man in the orange jersey. He is currently losing time to some potential GC contenders here because there is a number of them still in the top 10 as they roll towards the steepest part of this course here. They'll turn right in a moment and it has been a point in this race over a number of years where some very high caliber riders have actually physically got off their bikes and have to walk it to the finish. So that looks like it for Matt Suda from the Japanese team. Craig Oliver here from the Transport Engineering South and Deep South team is now leading the race, but on the inside of him, coming past him like a freight train. That looks like Dan Gardner from the PRV Pista Corsa team. Dan Gardner has just exploded from this front group. That man is making this toughest part of this climb look like a Sunday stroll. Wow, simply wow. How do you do that? I've just mentioned how tough this is. Look at 
at the background of those other riders who are grinding away trying to get themselves up, whereas this man is dancing on the pedals. We suggested it yesterday, his cadence rate getting up the big climb yesterday looked very impressive indeed. He didn't take the stage victory, but man alive, Doug, this guy could be backing up from last year to take out the Bluff Hill two years running. And the two chasers here, Oliver and Meyer, are just left in the wake of Dan Gardner. He has really put some time in, and this could be a decisive moment in his bid for the, the orange jersey in this year's tour. This man here is doing an almighty effort. He continues to dance on those pedals as he tries to take victory here in the open country stage of 154 kilometres here to Bluff. He is well and truly on his way. He has a quick, quick sneaky look there to see what's going on. And here he is, Doug, with the closing metres here. The open country stage into Bluff is going to go to the man originally from UK, adopted into New Zealand, now based in Auckland, is going to take it out two years running. That is a fantastic effort. That is a fine showing of how to climb Bluff Hill. That was a remarkable ride. And you can see here the other groups. Hayden Strong has also come out of nowhere. The local lad, Hayden Strong, is, is going to roll second or third in the stage. This group of riders here really have been left in the wake. There's number 11 also. Uh, Joseph Cooper from the Central Benchmakers Wall Bike Team for the over 35 silver jersey. What a ride from him as well. This is incredible stuff and again will shake up the overall general classification here in the 67th edition of this SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Gardner, what a fine effort indeed. Patience of plenty all day long. What a way to do it. And again, we see the man in orange here after a fine effort yesterday. Unfortunately today it didn't work out. Today was all about Dan Gardner taking out the Bluff Hill stage for the second year running and now moving himself into the lead here by a mere 35 seconds over from Meyer from France, Cooper, Oliver and Clark, all under a minute. Nick Kirkazoo picks up some early points once again, but it's Ollie Jones in the break of the day, moves himself up into second at 21. With a well-timed effort off the front, Max Campbell of Australia moves himself back into the polka dot jersey. Camden Fink becomes our latest under 23 leader from Oliver Watson Palmer at 39 seconds and Cooper at 44. While Joe Cooper continues to climb in the general classification, also leads in the silver jersey category. Ollie Jones, after a huge effort off the front of the day, gets the most combative from McClay Jewellers. And familiar looking leaders board here with the Wensley's team classification with Quality Food Southland over Transport Engineering Southland Deep South. We got the drawing board yesterday and you know, having Julie and Dean and all that sort of stuff on the team, helping us out to try and figure out how, to, how we're going to get this jersey back. Um, we had a plan for today, um, it didn't go exactly as we wanted it to, but um, yeah, we got, got just the points that we needed to get it back, so yeah, good day. That lead into Bluff is always just quite nervy and fast. It feels like a sprint finish. As soon as we got uphill, we had one more guy on our team just to do a big burner up the first pitch. And then the rest of it was just up to me. And I love going uphill. And I think that climb probably couldn't suit me any better. Really similar to one I used to train on back home in the UK. So I just did my thing and just pretended there was no one else on the road and went as hard as I could. I can't quite believe it. Yeah, same place a year on. It feels just as good, if not better. Follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at tourofsouthland.com.